All right, boys and girls, friends of YouTube, Loadfly Helis here. We are back for part six of uh, building the cadet. This should be the finish. All we like is cutting the cowl out, setting the wing on it, and balancing it, and then figuring out where to mount the battery, and we're done. Uh, this cowl is, is such a, it's a terrible, hard, hard job. I, re I recruited my buddy Bill over here. Uh, say hi, Bill. <laughs> he, Bill, come over and hang out today. It's so hot outside, just miserable to fly, and... He was bored, his wife's out of town, so he's over here helping me uh, do the rest of this. So, Anyway, we'll get started on this cow. I won't waste any time here because I want to wrap this up on this. be the last segment, hopefully. This shouldn't take too long, no more than what we're cutting out. Um, you can see right here on top, this line, that's where your little cap comes off. So you don't want the cow to go past that. It will be right in front of that. And if you can see these two little wings sticking out right here, there's a second layer of plywood behind that. That's where your screws are going to go in through your cowl. Cowl already has the holes in it, so it'll be real easy to mark. So, first thing we're going to do is determine how much at the top. So what I'm going to do, you can't see me over here, but I'm going to use my thumb and get this back to where it goes. Make sure I've got it up over there far enough. And there you go. We can use a piece of something to lay across something there. longer, don't you? No, not really. Because I'm is just going to, yeah, it'll you? be fine. Okay. Uh, so we're going to mark just behind that because I want it to clear the head. And as far as width-wise here, we don't really know, but I'm going to start out with just the middle. And then we'll work out as we need to go as we fit it. Because I, I want it to stay nice and clean and not cut any more than I have to. But uh, uh, I want it to not touch the head. You don't want this fiberglass touching any part of the engine because the vibration will just chip it away. So we got to make sure it clears all the way around. Now, on that, I don't know if that's going to work, Bill, because this carburetor is going to stick out. It might. Let me, here's what I'll do. I'll mark where the head goes to, about right there. And then the carburetor, what we can probably do is just taper in a small area like that right there for the carb to stick out. And then once we get that fitted, where the muffler comes out, we may end up having to do a small little section here. We'll see. Now let's get the top cleaned out first. Now, um, this is really very important. Uh, you guys need to really listen to this. Uh, please wear a mask when you're cutting this fiberglass and safety glasses. But uh, this fiberglass is not good to get in your lungs at all. It's terrible. Uh, like I have my glass of tea sitting here, I need to either cover that up or take it out of the room because this dust goes everywhere. I have a suction unit from my dental business that I'm going to hook up when I get my shop built and have a funnel up here where it'll suck most of the dust off, but I don't have it, I don't have room to set it up in here for right now. But anyway, go, you can get these at Walmart, probably in the, uh, lawnmower paint section paint section lawnmower part usually has them anyway get you some kind of a mask to wear while you're cutting this because this fine dust is terrible you get it in your eyes or you get it in your lungs and it causes some really serious problems so bill i don't have an extra one and i just oh, broke okay. that gosh uh, dang it what am i gonna do here tight. all right i will okay. be right back i gotta get some repairs today. sorry it wasn't recording i thought it was and anyway brain fart uh so I didn't get this on film, but we marked our cutout. We're going to start with that hole right there. I use my disc. Uh, I'm going to have to go quite a way farther back. Okay, now we're going to... What I'm trying to do here is... Get this where I can slide this up over the head and get it back behind it and then down over the shaft. But man, it is not wanting to work. But that's the way they've got it trimmed on the picture on the model of the book. So I know it can be done. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. The head's round. So rather than cut it square all the way back, I'm going to draw myself a bit of a half moon on here. Maybe not quite that far back, but here is where the uh, little stone comes in handy. Okay? Alright, here we go again. 
what the finger's inside. Okay, I'm not worried about getting it exactly right right now because once we get it fitted then I will go back and smooth up any little jagged looking edges and stuff. Alright, let's see what we got now. Voila. Looky there. There we go. Like magic. And it's hitting on my fuel line over here. So It's hitting on your needle valve. Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to cut a little hole for that. Mm -hmm. Doggone it. You can just unscrew it for now. Well, I sure don't want to get any dust in it, but... Let's see. We should be able to measure. Oh. Get an idea. Let me make. I'm gonna make a little mark around it. It'll, this this will wipe off easy with uh, alcohol. What I'm gonna do is mark where that needle valve is. I can. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to kind of measure and go to the other side. So we're gonna go just below where the hole is, and we're gonna measure in the center of it is about an inch and a half, not quite an inch and a half. So let's go over here, and go right below the hole, just not quite an inch and a half. That should be around the center. Okay, and then from the top center is three quarter. Somewhere right there should be my center. We're going to hopefully get this pretty close. Now here's what you can do with that. Watch this. Use your stone. I can't blow it off. i got a mask on. I'm sitting here blowing away. <laughs> Have it. Okay, now, we'll fine tune it and get the fuzz off of it later. We want to get it where it fits, and then we'll go back in and clean up the edges. I lost my bib. See, it helps keep that stuff off your shirt if you can get this to stay up here. I don't do this in a restaurant, by the way. I just eat sloppy. Okay, now, slide this over here again, and let's see what we got. We got that cleared on the engine. Well, I tell you what, we are just almost perfect, Bill. All right. We got the head cleared on both sides. Okay. It's a shame we had to go so far back here. To clear it, but it's But hard that's now. the only way to get it on other than just to open it all the way up. That's right. Well, I'm going to put an extra screw right in the top of it here. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I'm going to put a screw. There's four, two on each side. I'm going to put one in the top right here, too, to hold that down. Uh, but anyway... I got my hole almost perfect. <laughs> my needle valve's sticking out. It's maybe just barely touching on this bottom, if any. So what I'm going to do is wallow that out just a little bit. Now I'm going to go in here and kind of clean the fuzz off from the inside. There's no fuzzy in the hole. See how it kind of fuzzes around the edges? You can take that on the inside. I'm not putting any pressure to this when I'm cleaning off the fuzzies. I'm just barely touching it and it just eats it right off of there. So it's very clean. You can do it with a hobby knife. So, yeah, you can do it with a hobby knife. but it's not as good. Yeah, it doesn't come off as clean and it sticks and you can chip the edge of your fiberglass. This comes out really smooth. And uh, Okay, now, you know what? I forgot to check the carb. Let's go back on here again. Okay, we're going to open that up so the carb can breathe good. Carb is almost in the center. Looks like it might be slightly to one side there. That ain't what I need. We'll go over here just a little bit farther. What we're going to do is taper this in and blend it in with that. And we're going to Open that up so the carburetor can breathe good and get plenty of air. 
And then after that, all we're going to do is mark where the muffler. I am going to have drill holes over here because I'm. It'll go right there. But that's okay. You know how I do my holes? I use a long drill bit and stick them through and drill through the yeah. other side. All right, come off here. <laughs> a little tricky getting this stuff on and off. See, I almost cracked it right there. I did crack it just a little bit. It's real it's delicate. But uh, anyway. A little epoxy will take care of that. Yeah, I can put a little bit. Well, I'm going to put a screw right in there too. So. Oh, there we go. All right, we're going to shape this on out. Find one closer. I bet. Okay. We knew that's what she said. Okay. Uh, got that all cleaned out. Now, um, let's put it back on here and fit it again. Got that, and any of this black ink will come off with alcohol. So, very carefully slide that over there again. Get this on here. Look at that. Perfect. Looks good. Perfect hole for the carburetor. Looks real good. Uh, sticking up right there. It was actually touching the inside of the cowl, so it's kind of good that we got it right there where we did. You know, it's going to have to go right there. Be centered with the nose cone. Well, they got a lot of down thrust on this dude, that's for sure. Way more than an average plane. Uh, the down thrust is built into the firewall and it's pretty heavy usually it's like two to three degrees I bet this is five but uh, anyway now I'm going to take my what I do with my marker here it is make sure I got my needle valve in place put this down where it'll go I'm gonna mark these two holes, I think it's going to have to go back just a hair. Well, see so if I can get over here and do these two. Alright, let's see what we got there. And while I've got this on here, I'm going to take my mask off, man, I'm burning up. Okay, I'm going to see where my muffler cutout's going to have to be. It's going to go, I'm going to mark where the bolts go, so actually to the outside of the muffler, somewhere right in there. Okay, and then, see where it hooks up, it's... It's almost right here at the top. So, let me get this off again, see if I can get it off without, look at that, it goes on easy from the bottom mm -hmm. now. How about that? Yep. All right, I've marked where my muffler is gonna have to cut out. We're not gonna cut this whole top out uh, because I'm gonna have to drill some holes from the other side to put the bolts in. So, what I'm gonna do, so I'm going to cut this right here. To start with. Now I'll put my mask back on here in a minute. 
I'm going to use this also, just use the stone on this. So here we go again. And uh, never mind my bed. It's all right. Okay, now let's uh, see what I can, how close I got before we do any fine tuning on it. Let's go over here. Just line back up with our holes. Okay, wow. What is half the top of it's gonna have to come out, Bill? Yep. Come right here. All the way over to there. Maybe even farther back. Holy crap. We'll realize that that did you mark you I'm sure you did. Uh it'll it can almost set it on a little bit. Don't yeah. go quite as far up as you Well think. this is this is uh -huh. an angle, so I went too deep here yeah. a little bit, but yeah. I went a little too far down here because this is actually tilted down quite a bit. So anyway, all right, let's take that out and see what we got. Okay, let's see where we are now. You see what a mess it makes on your shirt. Yeah, we're getting some pretty good holes, but hey, that's part of it. You gotta get your cowl around your engine. So, let's see where we're at here. Uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, let me see. Take the bolts out. We're gonna see if it touches. And we don't want it touching any of this. And what I'll do is drill two little holes right over here just to put the screws through. It's gonna clear it. Awesome. So we're done right there, bud. I wouldn't have had to went quite as far back, but that's but okay. It's part of it. It's part of it. So but now, now. Wait, just a second. Do you have a long drill bit? If you don't. To go all the way through that? If you don't, it's all you gotta I do don't, is use a push rod. To mark it, yeah. That's right. And well, that's I'll tell you I what. Go ahead and put yeah, these Yeah, I can in. hold that. Well, I can hold it right there. It's not moving. As long as you so, don't move on you. Okay. Uh, yeah, like you said, a piece of push rock. And I just rock. threw them in the trash. That one's too little. So, any kind of push rod. There should be some right here on top. Wait, there's one. one. Ah, well, there you go. Maybe that'll reach. I don't know. Yeah, it will. There you go. Okay, we're going to take this piece of rod that we cut off. I do this all the time. It works great. Let's see if we can put some ink on it, maybe. Let me make sure your holes are lined up. Okay. All right, he's going to hold it over here for me. Wait a second, right there is... Okay, now uh, these. Okay, on it. Hold it right there. Okay, is that there, it? It's not on the light mark here. There it is. It has to tilt down quite a ways. All right, okay. right there. Now what about that side? Pretty close? I can't see it. Well, it's got to be lined up because these are lined up. As far as up and down. It's pretty fair. All right, I'm going to run this through here. You make sure your end is 
kind of sharp. Yeah. Oh, you just snip it off, put it in your drill. Really? Yeah. Cool. All right. See, learning something from somebody else. Okay, I'm gonna use this drill. It's got to be straight. It, you, this little curved part. I know. Um, I, I'm not strong enough to cut it off. Well, it's just barely because it's almost. Well, I'm going first. Of all, I'm just going to bend I'm it. Try straighten it. Okay. And then you got to make sure your end's a little sharp. So it'll make a mark on the mm -hmm. cowl over there. Well, it'll go. You just drill through it. Really? I wish, I wish I could find some little long drill bits. That'd be cool. This is what I do. I just. Golly. Some good stuff. Yeah. Okay. See how it leaves that little flash yeah. on the end? Okay. I'm going to okay. put the other end in my drill. And then you just take and you make that an angle. Okay. Okay. And see now you got an angle. Yeah. You chuck it up. So you what we're, bit. See what we did here, Bill? Cut that off to make a sharp tip on it. And then we'll put this in our chuck. Just barely do it by hand now, it's close enough. I barely got enough length to reach all the way through there. Oops, something crooked here. Still bent a little bit, I'm gonna have to go farther in maybe. Yeah. Maybe it'll reach. Good. Yeah, it's close enough. Alright, you got it? Pretty close? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna run that through. Watch my fingers on the other side. It's on that curve. Just want the bend. It's not gonna go all the way through. This one might. That one did, but this one here is on a curve section. But I think it's gonna make me a mark. So let's pull it off now and see. Yeah, it made a mark. Okay. So I can go through like this now. Mm -hmm. Homemade drill bit, man. You know where I came up with that? When mm -hmm. I was doing the uh, control horns and I didn't have the right size drill bit to make the hole. Yeah. I started using the control rod. That way it's exactly yeah. the right size. Okay, did you see what I did with that little stone? Oh, it's in my... It's in here. Never mind. It's in there. Duh. <laughs> I'm not with it today, guys. Good thing Bill's here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell you what. Jason, you're doing a much better job on your plane. Anyway, here we go. Let's wallow these out a little bit. Okay, other than a fuel valve, we are probably done, but here's the thing. I was going to put my fuel cap right on the very top. That's not going to work anymore. Now it's not going to work because I had to cut it out so far. So now I'm going to have to go through the side, which is going to make it short because I already cut it off. Um, oh. You know what? I can get a piece. I can get in there and put a new piece of hose on it and come out down here. Is it this one? Yeah, that's oh, the yeah. deal. Let's just put a new piece on it. Oh, because I don't see it be right above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can get that off real quick. All right, hang on a minute. We're going to put a new piece of fuel line on the fill line here. Okay, now, um, we've got it figured out where we want my fuel fill. And I use these little fuel dots. That's right. Like this, that screw in there. You don't want to ever just run your fuel line through a hole because the vibration rubbing against that will eat it up just like that. It'll cut a hole in it and then you got a leak. So I use these little fuel dot things that screw apart and you put them in a hole. So you can use rubber grommets. Or rubber grommets will things. work. And like Jason, he's using an actual fill thing to put in his, so his will be slightly different. All right, let me buzz that out. I'm gonna 
go slow till I make sure this. I don't want to get it too big. Cause this thing's got to fit just right to work well. I think I got to go bigger, but just a hair. Nope. Nope. That's it. That's it. Perfect. First time. How about that? Okay. Let me get that off. I'm done grinding. Whoo! That's hot. Holy cow! <laughs> Can't breathe. Okay. Now oh wait. Well, I'm gonna put Loctite on it. Oh. Now on the back of this little thumb nut, we want to put Loctite on this metal so that ring does not vibrate loose. There's a little nut. You get, you're dealing with a lot of vibration in a, in a nitro or a gasoline plant. Yeah, well, gas is even worse than nitro. Just, just realize that you're dealing with a lot of vibration. Okay, I'm going to kind of hold the outside of it, but I'm going to take needle nose, crank that down. On the outside part, you've got a rubber, a little rubber gasket behind there that seals up tight against that. All right, I will clean the marks off a little bit later because my alcohol's in the other room, and I don't want to get up and go get it right now and turn the camera off again. Okay, there's our fuel fill. Stop. Yeah. The guy needs to be in just a hair. Well, it does, doesn't it? Okay. Well, here's what I'll do. All right, we're going to drill the holes for our screws for the cow. Where are my screws for the cow? I thought this was everything that was left. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, anyway, let me drill some holes. We'll find the screws in a minute. I don't know what I've done with it. You think, or do I just need to find some? We may just have to find some, but I'm gonna. That's too big. There again on this, do not drill your holes too big. Uh, so they don't water out. Oh, and make. I'm gonna. That one in I am gonna come back just a little. Okay, let's see if I can get around here and drill these holes. There's that one. This bottom one is actually going right into the plywood firewall <laughs> the way it's angled, so that's mm -hmm. good. All right, um, you gonna do let me the find, yeah, I'll do that after I get this mounted. Right. Let me get some screws together and we'll be back in just a second. Okay, guys. Uh, we finally found some screws. I don't know what I did with the ones that come with it. I thought I had everything left out of the box in this, but they're not in here, so apparently I've done something with them. But anyway, I had a bunch. Now, we went ahead and threaded our screws into the holes. Now we're going to put the CA in them and uh, let that set up. So, well, you know what? First, I'm going to have to unplug my CA. Should have known it would do this. It almost looked like your bottle was dried up. Well, no, good, okay. Not dry, it's just... But yeah, they always plug they up. They just plug up, so... Okay, let's turn this over here. And... Quirk that about four or five drops down in there. This will help harden those holes where the threads will really tie in tight when you put them screws in there. But it's important to go ahead and thread your screws in because it... Yeah. It, it uh... You want frays, the glue. It frays the wood and makes the threads so it works real well. If you do it before, if you do it with just your drilled hole, it doesn't work as good. Yeah, uh, so drill your holes first, and then, then thread screw your thread in, and then come back and put your glue in it. And that way it, the glue kind of flows into those threads. All right, we want to let that set for just a little bit because uh, we do not want to get glue on our cowl. <laughs> So I'm going to turn it off for a second. We'll be back in just a minute. Okay, guys, we're back. We finally found some screws and washers that are going to work. So let's get the cowl on here. Uh, now what we're going to do is slide it up over here. But as I do, I want to put... Oh, did I put that? Yeah, it should be under. I want to put my fuel line out through my deal. I can get it. Oh, come on. I can do it. From this way, Terry. Oh, you it. got it. Good yeah, job. Here it comes. Okay, I'm going to pull that out. Catching it now. There you go. 
Now, we've already put glue in our holes. So we're, we're going to let it dry. Let it dry good. And let me get this screwdriver. I think will work the best. Make sure your screwdriver fits your hardware good. Yeah, so they're easy mess to up strip. Slide that washer up, kind of center it if I can. And if you get one that starts to strip on you, don't do not use it. Get another one because you'll end up trying to take it out and you won't be able to. A lot of this hardware that comes with the planes is really cheap screw heads, and they'll strip real, real easy. It's good enough. It yeah, just that odd one. Have to take great care in getting the exact bit that fits it. Pointy no, it point doesn't have pointy. Here, can you start that and I'll brace the plane. plane? There you go. Two people jobs. See, I told you I needed help today. Okay, get this side in. It's just, you know, somewhat center. It don't have to be perfect. I'm trying. Yeah, there we go. That's close enough. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Go down with her. Good enough. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Center down pretty good. All right, now I will get this side. Should be lined up. Well, look at there. Actually, uh oh, something's. Uh oh, my needle valve now holds off. Now, how did I do that? Hmm. My needle hole valve off. Hold out. Yeah. I don't know how I managed that, but I did. It's easy to do. Um, all right, we're gonna take them back out. So just mark it. Yeah, we'll have to cut it a little farther forward. It's 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 hard to get all this stuff exact. It not, really not is. Not forward, but up in a little bit. Okay. I guess when I tip that down farther. Yeah, it's hard to get everything perfect. There's no. I'm glad I noticed it. Now. Well, I, had, I gotta get my fuel line out of there too. It's pinched up. Oh, there. that's right. To the muffler. Where's your little Ryobi? It's over here. Oh, okay, no big. All right, let me pull that fuel line back out. You know what? I'm gonna do something else when I get this off too. I am going to drill my hole in the top of this, but I'm gonna hold a board on it. To put my center screw in up there. No, I didn't measure it. I just guessed. So it may be a little bit off. Jason, I bet you measure yours. <laughs> okay. Now, I've got to whittle out my hole just slightly. There we go. Not too bad out around, just slightly, but it'll work. Um... dust off of it. Okay, let me get that fuel. Now, this is the pressure line from the muffler. I about forgot to pull it up out of here. Let me get that down here. Okay, hopefully you can see that. You know what? I wonder if that's going to come out or if I'm going to have to drill a hole for that. Oh, yeah. Let me see where the, I mean, hang on a minute. You need a hole for that and a grommet is what you need. Yeah, let me see where the muffler is going to hit. In the the vent line. It may come out here and not hit it. I'm not sure. It may. I don't. I got my doubts. I do too. I think we're going to put another one in That's deals. That's what I think. But I just use one of your rubber grommets. Well, actually, it's going to come over the top. Oh, over the top. No problem. And I, I think I can cut it to where it won't rub. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. It'll come over the top. So we're no good. No problem. So I just got to put my fuel line back in here again. There you go. Hit it the first time. Good job. Could say something, but I'm not going to. Don't. Okay. Oh, all right. Let you put your two screws back in. All right. And I'm going to start my top one over here. Well, shoot. There we go. Got it started anyway. My bottom one started. Alright, I got them started.
we'll have this thing done here in a little bit. So I told you it's gonna take a whole hour just to do the cow. <laughs> We're tag teaming. Yeah. Cow is usually one of the hardest parts to do. So. And don't try to rush anything. The mistakes you make are ones yeah. that you'll have to live with that you won't want to. Oh, yeah. Boy, I don't know if I got that hole back far enough. I'm gonna... Yeah, it is. Okay. I'll have to start a little bit bigger hole to get this tip going. That's not really a wood screw. Mm -hmm. You may have to start it with the screwdriver. Yeah, it's got that blunt end on yeah. it. Oops, let me get it. Okay, yeah, can you get it in there? It should take it will. a minute. There it goes. I'm going to put this one, even though the book didn't call for it, just to hold that top part down. The vibration will cause that little skinny area to bust, releasing cracks. Don't forget so. to CA it. Yeah, we got to put some CA in that one too. And I'll have to be real careful not to. Not to get it up here in the. Oh, good lord, that already glued to that tip. I don't believe this. <laughs> don't take but just a second. I'm gonna stick it down in the hole. Okay. Otherwise, they go everywhere. Yeah, I'll need another pin for now. Whoa! <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Knocked my tripod over there. Houston, we got a problem. Wow. Well, don't say one. it. Don't say it. I know you're thinking about monkeys, but there's only two of us. <laughs> there's not three. Yeah, don't there's, say it. There's absolutely no footballs involved. No monkeys or footballs <laughs> in the comments below, okay? <laughs> we can't help it. We're like this. <laughs> we're born that way. Oh, man. We, we've had so many people on our videos that uh, say, my gosh, I wish you could come hang out with you guys. You guys all look like you just have the best time, and we do. We just we just have a blast together. Enjoy every minute of it. We're all kind of crazy, you know, redneck hillbillies, and we just, <laughs> hey, we have a great time. It's a hoot. Um, I need to tighten my screws down. Now, they make an extension for this needle valve, but honestly, there's just enough sticking out. I can get my, hold it with my thumb and my finger. So you can kind of push in on the cow a little bit. I can turn it, so I'm not going to put an extension sticking out there. But you can also use a little piece of push rod and make a little L if you want. A yeah, lot of people you can do, do that. that. Um, I, I, I don't like these two holes here, but, you know, it's a trainer. Uh, had, had this been a fancier plane, I would have come up with something different than that. But there's no way to get to those bolts right here without cutting more of this out or the two holes. So we just opted on this particular plane. For the two holes. In some cases, they might do it differently. Oh yeah, I would I would have done it differently if it was a fancy, you know, good hot rod and didn't want to mess up the cowl. I would never do that holes in the side. So try not to make any more, any larger holes in the cowl than you have to because they don't look as good that way. But sometimes you have to. Okay, cowl is installed now. Bill, if I can keep from hitting you in the head. Ow! I'm gonna turn that around here. Okay, can you see my fuel line sticking out? Now what we got is this little fuel dot plug that comes with the aluminum deal. Just stick that in the end of your fill, which it's kind of tight at first, but after you run fuel through it, it gets a little easier, not as, as tight. Now you have to use this smaller diameter, outer diameter fuel line, like this green or orange. If you use the, is it the Great Plains brand, that blue? The blue. Is it's way too thick. It won't go through this. So... But see that will just stick right up in there. And what there you brand go. is this fuel line? Uh, Thunder Tiger, isn't it? I don't know. I got a, I got a pack down here. Is it real bar or? This is Dubro. Dubro, okay. Uh, I guess it's it's nitro. It's not Tigon. So anyway, this is Dubro brand, but it's skinnier outer diameter. The blue I'm talking about. Sorry, Bill. It's a little too fat for this type of fitting. Here's the Great Plains blue, and it's way bigger in diameter, and it will not fit through that deal at all. So, anyway, you can just kind of push that in there like that, and it'll keep it tight. And when you're ready to fuel, you just pull it out. Got enough room to pull that out, put your deal in, and fuel it up. Okay, the only thing we got left up here is the muffler, and we'll clean the black off of this 
Matter of fact, it's coming off right there now. I've got my alcohol over there in the other room. I'll have to go get it after a while. But that came off on this side. Shouldn't need it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now All we're right. going to turn it back around. Knock All it right. in the head again. Ow. And here we go. We'll see. First, I'm going to do something. You can adjust the angle of this spout on your muffler. You have to undo this. I would not recommend doing pliers like I'm doing. There you, you go. Using a little adjustable wrench or whatever. Yeah, let's get a little socket. There you go. That's the best way. That's to do the it. best way to do it. I shouldn't even showed you the pliers. Don't ever use the pliers. And then make sure you get a Phillips in that fits it well because these mm -hmm. can be a little tight. And I believe it's the larger Phillips. It is. Okay, we're gonna loosen the nut on this end, and now we're gonna loosen the screw on this end, which goes all the way through. It's the same. Mm -hmm. one. Now that rotates. So you can move that around. So I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to point it down. It will get a lot of fumes and oil on the tail back there, but it won't get as much on the side. And I will put an extension on it also. The whole uh, idea is to keep your plane a little cleaner. Yeah, on the nitro. So I've got it pointed kind of down and out, and I will put a gray extension, extension. on it, pointing down even farther. So Exhaust uh, deflector, I yeah. believe. I don't have any right now is why I, don't I didn't show them. So I've got someone order. They'll be here. Don't put that up. They'll be here Tuesday. No, I didn't. What an idiot. <laughs> so I'm getting in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry. Okay, hold both pieces. Always got all the time in the world. Tighten the screw down and then you can do this one separate. I don't remember which one I had now. Getting in a hurry a little bit bigger. That's easy yeah. to do. Well, I'm just trying to get this video as short as possible, and it's so hard to do. I cannot get them under an hour, no matter what I do. Oh, well. You can spend uh, a fair amount of time on them, and mm -hmm. it's, the more time, the better model you get. What in the world? Well, it's one of them. I just used it. I know. I have to grab that other one. There it is. Yeah, that's that one. Okay. okay. All right, get the muffler tightened back up. And then I'm going to get a uh, ball driver out of here. Hopefully I have one in this drawer that'll fit this. Well, it's going to be a metric. Okay, here I got my tea handle. Is that what you had? Yeah, something like that. All right, let me get the screw through the hole there. Cap screw, Allen head. We got one. You want to be careful and do not cross thread these. And they are very easy. They're very cross easy to cross thread. Real that one tried to it. there, but it's going now. If you do, it's a just don't do it. Yeah. Take your time. Oh, my wrench, come on. Almost got this hole slightly too far back, but it's working. Very hard to get them just. Okay, I'm just gonna snug this where I can rotate my muffler. So I get the other one lined up. And hopefully it'll stay on there. We've got a lock washer on these. You don't need to put Loctite. Loctite ain't gonna do you no good. The heat will make it come loose. Let me stand up to do this one. Let me see where to go. You can use a little bit of silicone for added security. Yeah, I told them that on another one, but yeah, you can you can use heat silicone like you would use on a a car. Well, automotive's better, but regular silicone will handle over 400. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd use automotive for sure. Automotive's better. You can put that on the threads, and that will help kind of like Loctite. But I've, I've never had any problem with lock washers myself. I've only had one muffler come loose out of eight years. So that's good. That's that's pretty good odds, as many planes as I've flown. Yeah. Well, I thought that would fit. Maybe it is this one. It's metric. It is. It's metric. This must just be worn down. It is. It's just yeah, worn it's down. Worn. Gosh darn it. All right. Well, you know how to renew that, don't you? Cut it off. Cut it off. Yeah. All right. We got them in there. We're going to cinch them down. Later. I'm going to put this on here. About right there. You could loop it through that other one. It would hold it off. If you want to? Well, it'll just push it. Oh, back that way? Yeah, back oh, that all right. way. That's alright, it won't. Okay. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. It won't hurt nothing. I'll just make it as short as I can where it won't hit this. Okay. So, right there, we're gonna cut that. If you use side cutters, try to get them straight. 
All right, there's our vent line. It doesn't matter if it's touching the head. That's not going to hurt anything. Uh, okay. It's the fiberglass that gets you in trouble. Engine is done. Cowl is done, except for wiping off a little black. And now all we got to do is get the wing on it and balance it. Well, put the prop on. Prop but, uh, spinner. Um, or prop. Anyway, let me go see if I've got I don't want to use the plastic spinner. I'm going to see if i got a aluminum one. So we'll be back in just a minute. Okay. Uh, we're down to the prop. We're going to put, we'll put the back plate on. There's, there's little... Uh, spacers that go in behind it. Be sure and get the proper spacer that makes it fit snug and it doesn't have any slack in it. You don't want any vibration up here any more than you have to. So put the prop on and we'll put the prop nut or not nut washer and then the prop nut. And this has to be turned around against those little pegs for these holes to line up. So before I tighten it down, I'm going to make sure I've got that right. It's going to have to go back this way a little ways. So you always want to make sure where that, there we go. So, it's going to have to be, this one's going to have to be about an eighth of an inch off of those pegs. And then check your compression. Yeah, I'm going to cinch it for just a minute. Check your compression line. Okay, you don't want it right there, because if you come in a dead stick, uh, you, chances are better of breaking that prop off. So you want to put it where it turns sideways. So we're going to turn this whole thing around to about right there and tighten it a little bit check my cone again okay, a little too far right there now we'll put that on the ratchet where I can actually get some torque we want to watch that and make sure it does not turn on us which it can real easy get this good tight this ratchet that's break, a metric. They'll break loose sometimes with a starter. Yeah, that's metric. That's why that ain't fitting good. Oh. So I need a 10 millimeter, I think. Yep. Probably. Yep, that's yep. a 10 millimeter. That's why it was slipping. Okay. Tighten her on down. Now that should still line up. Perfect. You want your you want the gap uh, between your prop and then you don't want this touching the prop so you want to be sure there's space on each side of it so we're clear so now we are good to put these little screws in I'm just going to start it with this screwdriver because it's not the right fitting for this make sure you get the right size in the end yeah or you'll strip it out especially these little prop yeah, screws the little spinner screws are the worst for stripping Okay, got them started with that. Now, let me see if my, this one, I don't know if it'll reach up in there or not. We'll have to see. Yeah, so far, but yeah, it's going to make it by golly. Okay, cinch those down, but do not strip them out. Be careful. Get that in there. I did not have an aluminum, small enough aluminum two blade. Uh, nose cone, so we're going to go ahead and use the black one for right now. Um, generally, I have a whole drawer full of them. I have a whole drawer full, but they're all three blades. So anyway, all right, there you go, guys and gals. That's all done. We're going to take a break, put our tools up, and get the wing out, and then we'll show you how to balance it, and we're done after that. Be back in just a bit. Okay, guys, uh, now we're getting ready to mark it for the CG, and we have uh, three and a half, between three and a half and four and a quarter. So we're going to start in about the middle of that. Maybe just slightly past the middle. <coughs> uh, so, there are three and a half. So, half of that would be, yeah, just over, just under three quarter, three and three quarter. So, we're going to go half of that, just a hair over. So, I'm actually going to go three and three quarter. Make a mark here. What I did, I took one ruler and I put it up against here, against the table, and slid this one up to it. That way you know you're right on the edge, or at least you're you're equal on both sides. Now, we're going to have to slide this up just a little. That's good, Bill. Get that in place. Then I can take that off and hold my finger. 
and I went three and three quarter. Okay. Now what we're gonna do? Get us a pair of scissors and a piece of this blue tape. And this is a great way to do it. We're gonna take, cut two little strips about an eighth of an inch wide. There's you one. Okay. We're gonna put it right on that mark up close to the fuselage. Then when you reach under this with your fingers, it's easy to fill the tape. And this is really get right on it. Really a great way to do it. it just I prefer it. doing it with my fingers. I've had a couple of CG machines. I don't like none of them so far. Uh, the, space, the great plane ones, I wouldn't give you a dime for a truckload of them. I actually leave this on most of my planes. That way when I change something, I can just you check can just it real quick. Yeah, it's not going to show, so you can't leave it on there. All right, now, let's see if we can we turn the ceiling fan off for a second. And as a rule, on your CG, farther forward, forward makes your plane a little gentler. Further back makes it a little more aggressive in the air, supposedly. Yeah. Too far back and it's way tail heavy and it's out of control or hard to fly saggy like a sack of taters on it if you're too far forward nose heavy it's it, just dolphin. it's just dolphin and you can't hardly get it back on the ground okay let me get this up here got the ceiling fan off i'm gonna get my first finger right on the center of the tape and i'm gonna pick this up and okay, woo, we heavy. are nose heavy so i'm gonna have to move my battery way back all right we're gonna take the battery out and uh be right back uh what i've done we took the battery out I'm going to set it right back here. You just stick it on the top until you find where it goes and then you incorporate that into the inside to mount it. I put a little piece of double sided sticky tape so it doesn't fall off on us. And he's guessing uh, from experience where yeah, it might I'm, be. I may be a little too far back. I'm hoping actually it'll put right here. It'll be easier for me to mount. So we'll see. I'm going to try that first. Okay. Make sure that fan's slowed uh, down. Ceiling fan will affect this, so always turn your fans off. It's low enough. I'll give it a try. Look at that. Perfect balance right there where I got and That's it. from building a lot of airplanes. Yeah, my second guess, I got it right on the money. Now, here's another thing. Lateral balance. A lot of people do not lateral balance. That's very important. Not so much on a trainer, but an acrobatic plane, it's very important. Uh, so you can take, you can do hold the tail like that, and I'll hold the spinner where it's loose. See, it's a little bit to the right side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this battery and I'm going to mount it endways up and down against this side and that will kind of compensate. The reason for that, your muffler is on the right side when you have an in, uh, upright or inverted engine, or well, inverted bill on this side. When your engine's upright, your muffler's over here and it tends to lean more weight to that side. So if you pull it real easy, it should come off. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so anyway, okay, we're going to have to go back inside now and build a bracket. Let me get that done and I will be back in just a second. Okay, guys. Uh, we are going to make a battery platform to strap our battery to. I have these little flat pieces of plywood. I get these at Hobby Lobby in a package. They're pretty reasonable. I keep a whole drawer full of them. You can cut them down to whatever size you need. Um, we're going to take a piece of an, another one and put it right here on this corner because the inside of the plane has dual layers of this plywood, this thickness around the bottom and this side but not here so I'm going to put a piece right here so that it will fit flush and we'll glue that <coughs> to the wall of the plane. The battery will actually strap to this with velcro. Now I've cut me four little pieces of flat stock. I've got uh, the little, I don't know what brand this is, saw. I got it uh, Tower Hobbies in the little miter box. I use that to cut off my four pieces. I'm going to put one piece behind on top and bottom and then I'm going to put two together and put at the base of this, and we're going to put foam on it also, but the base of this for the battery is set against so it doesn't fall down and it's going to be strapped in. I also have these little foam pads. You can buy these at Lowe's, any, any Home Depot uh, place like that. What they are, they're little insulators for light switch covers. And they're pretty cheap, but they make great padding to put these batteries on. And you can use double-sided tape, just stick it right to that. So. We'll trim that off as needed. But anyway, we're going to get the pieces glued together, and then I'll come back and show you how we mount the Velcro and everything. Be back in a little bit. Yeah. It's better. It's better, a lot better. Really okay, is. we're going to mix up some five minute epoxy. And we were just talking yeah, about Z epoxy being an awful good brand. It's the best you can get. Uh, I used it's to use better. the Great Plains, but after time, it yellows. I did a video here a while back showing you how to fix your crystallized hardener, which it still works. But 
the thing about this epoxy I have found out since then, it doesn't ever crystallize. You can leave it. My friend Norman has some out in his garage. It's been out there for two years and it still has not turned yellow. So uh, Z-Poxy is definitely the best brand, best way to go. And from what I understand, it's a little stronger. Yeah, I've heard that too. I'm not sure it's true, but it's, it's better to work with. So, all right, we're going to glue that right there. We're going to put a double piece on this side. I didn't have anything thicker, so. Now, this is hardwood right here that I'm using. So we'll add just a tiny bit of weight, but this whole whole bracket here won't weigh more than two or three ounces. So now get those even, and hopefully without it falling apart, I'm gonna put one on the bottom, and then I'm gonna hope I can put my clamp. On it. Ah, if that slips out of my hand, it's going to throw things everywhere. <laughs> okay, now, kind of loosen it and slide it to get them lined up. Oh, come on now. Alright, let me get another. Oh, we got a bigger one. Put a bigger one on this end. Make sure they don't move on me. You want to get your clamp center too so it doesn't pull it sideways. Alright. Now we're going to put one more on the back side. Because this is what's going to glue to our inside of the plane. Put that on there. Put one on that side, Bill. Oops. Yeah, yeah, it's real easy to slip. Pull it up just a little and get it centered. There you go. Okay. All right. We are going to let that dry for five, ten minutes, five minutes or so. In five minutes, it's workable, fully hardened in, I don't know, 12 hours or something. But anyway, uh, we'll be back in a minute. Okay. We've got our back braces glued that's going to glue into the plane. Got our holes cut. I used a Dremel with a cutoff disc cut the holes and then kind of shave them out with a knife so um, now we're going to put a piece of velcro through here run it through this side should be may have to widen it just a hair yeah it'll go I just got to push on it yeah. oh, some pliers or something yeah. alright we got that piece through there now this end will be a little easier. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I always forget to see if I'm in front of the camera. A lot of jabbering, I guess. Now, if you leave your Velcro a little long, you can wrap your battery and then you can tuck your wires on your Velcro yeah. and hold your so, wires in place. So this is going to go just like that. And this piece will come down and just like that. So we're going to leave double it here okay now I have two options on the sides <coughs> I can trim this out and glue a piece of the square stock on each side of it or I can just run another piece of velcro around this and glue it to the back um, probably less time to do the velcro you think Bill yeah It'd be easier than having to wet that glue dry and everything It'll be lighter too, no more wood. So, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm out of that color, but I got this. And you don't have to glue it, it'll stick. Well, yeah, duh. Forgot about that. Okay, let's see. That around to right there. Yeah, it'll stick to the back. So, let's get enough cut off here. Okay, now we're going to pull this tight, pull that tight. Actually sink it into the foam. Yep, yeah, and there you go. Your battery is not going anywhere. Now this is going to be glued to the inside of the uh, plane on this. And if I need to, I'm going to look at the wall. I may I need to, to make a put a couple piece. little pieces right here, but I don't know. We'll see if it's top. And i got to make that one gotta piece. got to make the so. one for the side. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and mark this now. Let's see. Put it right there. And the bottom. 
still recording if you tip that yeah. camera up so they can see us. Okay, sorry. I meant That's to tip okay. it up. I forgot. There you go. Okay, okay. it's going to go right in there. So I do need to make, cut a little piece off of that one I had. Here it's it is. Right there. Uh, not quite the full length. Okay, guys, I didn't realize it, but my camera went off. My card was full. I had to put another card in it. Anyway, we mixed up our glue. We put our little second piece on the back of our battery holder. And let me get this down here. Uh, we've glued it in. You can see the second layer behind there. Uh, I need it for a spacer. So we glued that all the way across and all the way across the bottom. And the battery, the way the battery is kind of holding it down, so we're letting it dry good. Uh, this is all done. We'll be back in just a little bit and mount the receiver and get all the wires tidied up and cinched up out of the way. An extension. Yeah, I've got to make an extension from my oh, aileron switch. switch on the other side. Oh. Uh, and then we'll put the wing on it and check our balance again. Check our balance one more time. Because we anyway, may be different because we... We had to move it forward slightly where I had it was right, right here, here. But that bulkhead was going to make it too hard to get behind and there. So I had to put it right in front. So it might not have made that much difference. I had three quarter of an inch to play with on the balance anyway from three and a half to four and a quarter. So yep. I don't think this uh, inch, two inches, inch and a half inch. is going to make that much difference. But we'll see. But anyway, we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, guys. Uh, we are completely finished. We've got our battery mounted back here. Lead runs underneath there to the switch, and let me turn this around. We got our receiver mounted right there on the foam. Got our wires all nice and tucked up. We put one antenna up the side, the other one back. You want to try to get them in a 90 degree L angle if you can. So we glued this one through a piece of heat shrink where the antenna will actually still come out. Uh, that way, if you have a crash, your Receiver gets chunked loose, it won't rip your antenna out, it'll pull out of that. So the other piece is just sticking down underneath there, it was toward the back and then this side's up. So we're in a 90 degree L shape. Anyway, we're fixing to put the wing back on it, plug the ailerons in. Bill, I'll let you. I'm just going to put one the, of these on it because I always like to have one. Yeah, I leave it on this end, is what yeah. I do. So, so I just got Here, one. Here, I'll hold the wing. We don't need it on right now, but I got one out because it's going to need yeah, it. Yeah, always use a safety clip on your aileron wires and the battery wire that goes to the switch lead always use a safety clip on that so they do not come loose now these are fitting awful tight really Golly. yeah huh. <clears throat> it fit got it in i there. had some that fit right. awful tight yeah, yeah, dark to dark okay yeah. oh well all right now just kind of stuff the wiring up toward the front as you put that on and here's your bolts Yeah, I'm gonna put the radio down. Go ahead and turn the radio on. Let it initiate. Turn this on. Okay. Hey, we got ailerons. Look at that. Right. Elevator, rudder. This thing ought to fly, man. Let's go. So we are going to check our balance one more time. Uh, need to turn this fan off. So, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'll put it back in the drawer. No there you go. Took my tools away from my helper. Here. I used to not tighten these up when I was fooling with it, and I found out you might as well. Yeah, it'll, <laughs> yeah, it'll it can flop wiggle, all so. around on you. Just snug them down. That's all we're doing. I see, it's got to push forward. There it is. As far as it'll go, and oh, to get down in that groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, the wing is on. Well, I'm gonna let you have the camera if you wanna kinda go back over there. If you can get over there. <laughs> can you get I'm out? I'm gonna try. I got so much junk in here. Okay, we're gonna check the balance one more time. We did have to move our battery forward just slightly. Find my tape under here, get my finger centered. Look at that, didn't change it a bit. That no, is perfectly didn't balanced. It. When you pick that up and that thing sets the level, doesn't tip front or aft, it's just, it's awesome. Perfect. So, okay, we are ready to set to our go. toes. So, we are all finished. Bill, thank you for helping me today uh, on the last section. Jason, uh, I can't wait to see your finish. You are doing really good, buddy, on, on yours. And uh, thank you to all of our viewers out there that are watching our Bill videos. I, I, have way more audience than I ever dreamed I would on these. So I uh, hope this helps some of you guys out. Tried to show you some good detail. Next video will be the maiden flight. Thanks for watching. <laughs>